Hey everyone, Joey here from Wandering Hermits, and welcome to the latest development video for our point-and-click game, An Adventurer's Tale, set in the world of the Weave and the Void. Um, today we're going to be looking at um, creating buildings with modular assets. Um, so as you see down here, you have all these different pieces you can work with, so I've just got some tips and tricks of what we're going to be doing with that. In the last episode, we looked at just kind of getting a rough idea of where we wanted things placed, and this is where we're at now. Um, so we're going to be continuing on with that as well, just getting everything set up. Um, as you can see, got the shack here built. Uh, just threw that together, cause, uh, and if you remember, this is going to be the sheriff's house. So before we get into it, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon so you get updates for future content here, and leave a like, comment, question, whatever you need. Um, let's get into it. So when starting with these modular pieces um, I like to start at the bottom work up that's that's how I do it um, just basically stack it it's like Legos boom 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 all the way to the top and it helps if you can keep some stuff grouped together rather than turned into um, blueprints so for instance this building that I built it's already been turned into a blueprint and then turned into a static mesh so as you can see it's it's all one big happy building. Same with this one. Oh, that's the roof, my bad. The roof is separate. That one, that one, and so on. This one, however, I left grouped. So I'm able to pull pieces off of this if I want. So like if I want that window, pull that off. And that makes it really nice for when you're, you know, doing that style of window. Got something there. So when you build your base, um, basically what I like to do is I'll build one side build one end and then I'll just mirror those if you don't know how to do that um, so like here we have a pillar and a wall um, duplicate it and you can just go to mirror tra or excuse me transform and then down to mirror so if I mirror it on the Y see it's in the exact opposite of what it was that way everything ends up lining up correctly um, you can't really do that with like these pieces because like as you can tell like one's up and one's down so if you just mirror it it, it won't line up when you build your side walls so when you when you do like this kind of wall you actually have to come and flip it that way you know when you build your pieces they'll buckle together that's not too big a deal but it does make it quicker rather than doing everything piece by piece as you can see, I'm working with groups, so I'll build one section, group it together, duplicate it, throw it to the other side. Um, it's just a easy way to keep, you know, make sure everything's the same. You know, this is exact same as this, only opposite. Um, so it just makes things nice. You know, it's the same height, everything. Same with your floors, or your bases, rather. Um... That's that's pretty much the tip of the day. So we'll just, <laughs> just keep going here. If you don't know how to group things, this is where you go to groups and you can ungroup things and you go back to your individuals. And like if you have this group and this group, you can come in here and you can regroup and that'll put those two things in a group. So groups are very helpful. Shoot. I ungrouped this.
And there you go. Quicker than, quicker than nothing. And there you've got your base and your walls. And then here from there, you know, you can decide, you know, what do you what do you want your here's some different, you know, this is the tavern obviously, so we have different, you know, do we just want brick straight to the roof? You know, do we want something a little different where it's a little taller? Uh, for this particular building, we do want it to be a little bit taller, and I'll tell you why. So here's just a generic, cool model that we found on the in Google Images. Um, this is a really cool model, by the way, for uh, some 3D printing. Um, but we're going for like this T style of a house um, for the sheriff's building, and the idea will be like one side's his living quarters, and the other side uh, part is he might have a he's going to have a couple cells. Um, or he can throw some some uh, local drunks or rather whatever if he so needs to. So we're gonna make this one a little taller just so that we have plenty of plenty of meat to work with. But we'll probably do uh, let's do wood walls for this one. So let's I don't know that we want to go with really super tall, but we'll make it. Yeah, I think those will work good. Actually, it'd be nice if we had... Is this one a little longer? Yeah, that's the one I want. And you just kind of got to play with the corners, how the corners line up with these two pieces. Because these uh, these walls don't have corner nice corner pieces for us to play with, like the uh, like the bricks do. That looks okay. And remember, you know, you're never going to be like looking. And, and that's the, that's the disadvantage with working with modular pieces. Um, you know, if I was a 3D artist, you know, I could just be like, okay, I'm going to end and build the building. Um, I'm not, I could be, but I'm not. <laughs> so this is what we have to work with. something like that make sure those kind of line up so there's your corner and then you can get these thrown out So I'm fair. Um, so this video is probably getting plenty long as it is, so we're probably going to be wrapping it up here pretty quick. But basically what you do from here, you know, finish your building however you want it to look. And you're going to want to come up to here. And you're you're going to want to select everything, every piece in your building. And that can be, tint, uh, you know, a little bit hard. But you want to make sure you get every piece in your building. And then come up here to blueprints. And you're going to convert selection to blueprint and then we'll, then you're going to want to save that remember that separate folder that we did with our uh, within our point and click toolkit um, you're going to have a buildings so here's a perfect example here's the shed so here's the sh uh, the shed blueprint so as you can see it has all the pieces 
And so if we want to modify this building ever, we come in here and we modify the blueprint. And then all we have to do is create a new static mesh or convert the new blueprint to a static mesh. So once you have your blueprint, you select your blueprint, come up here and you're gonna wanna come down to convert um, shed blueprint to static mesh. So you wanna click that and that will convert this um, from here where you have a blueprint of it with all the pieces to just boom static mesh of that building all right ladies and gentlemen that is going to wrap it up for today um stick around because we'll be continuing on next time you come back the rest of this will probably be built and we'll start working on uh, some fine tuning, some environment type stuff. Maybe add, maybe next time we'll look at adding game tags to things. Um, so, yeah, stick around. See you guys later.